Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In this week's video, I'm having a go at combining fabric with Aquacast Eco Resin. I really wanted to see how the beautiful pattern and texture of the fabric would complement the smooth luster of the Aquacast. But I had one big question. Is it best to apply the fabric to the mould and pour the Aquacast onto it and let them bond together? Or is it best to apply the fabric after the Aquacast has cured? Well, there's only one way to find out and that's to have a go. And that's what I will be doing in today's video. I recently purchased these Stamperia Fantasy World fabrics which I absolutely fell in love with when I saw them online at Charmed Cards and Crafts. I'll leave a link in the description. The patterns are just gorgeous. I think they're designed for using in scrapbooking and other crafts like that. Um, so yeah, it's not like fabric by the roll. The small pieces with the design printed onto the, you know, a proper full design printed onto each piece. So it's not like a repetitive pattern. So look at that design. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So obviously I needed to press it first and then cut it out ready for my mould. So the mould I'm using today is a large oval tray and I've already made a template that fits the inner section of the tray and that's just a paper template that I made before filming. And so once I've pressed it, I will be drawing around it and cutting out the shape to fit into the mould. So here it is, all nice and pressed. Let's get this fabric cut out. I just drew on the back and then cut out and that's it basically. So what I'm going to do is just speed it up. Okay then, once my fabric was cut out, I decided to wet it before applying it to the mould. I just thought it would help it to relax out and stretch a little bit if it wanted to. And then that way, once the Aquacast goes onto it, it's not going to start stretching out and warping whilst the Aquacast is soaking in. It will have already done that part. And I can smooth it out to its full, you know, full size and it's already done that stretching first. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Yeah, so that was the plan when I wet it. And what I'm doing here is just letting the excess soak off onto a puppy pad because I just want it to be damp, not soaking wet. Next, it was time to mix up my Aquacast. Now, Aquacast is from Elechem Resins and it's a water-based eco resin. So there's no extra liquid that you have to buy with the powder. You're just buying the powder. I used the calculator on the Aquacast page of the Elechem website to calculate exactly how much water and powder I would need for this tray. And so I'm measuring out the water first, then adding the powder. So I've said this many times before, but just in case that this is your first time here, Aquacast has a polymer fused into the powder. Sometimes you get these eco resins in two parts. You get a powder and a liquid with the polymer in the liquid. But with this one, the polymer has been fused into the powder. So you don't need to buy the special liquid. You just add water and it does the same thing. And the advantage of doing that is that by, it's much easier to dissolve the powder in water than it would be in, a, you know, like a thicker solution. So it dissolves much easier and it's very quick to mix. So as you can see, it's there and I didn't speed up the footage. So that's how easy it is to mix. Next, I needed to choose a colour to complement the fabric. And I've got my little swatch card there that I made with some different coloured beads using most of the pigments I've got from Homeware Design Co. And I decided to use the duck egg blue. I thought that would complement the fabric really well. 
I just added a couple of drops and gave it a really good mix. I didn't want it to be too dark. It's best to add just a little bit at a time until you're happy with it rather than adding too much at first because obviously once it's in you can't take it out. Next I smoothed my damp fabric panel face down onto the mould and I was kind of hoping that by having it damp it would cling to the silicon but it didn't really which is a shame because then I was starting to worry that the aquacast would seep underneath the fabric more than anticipated. I knew it would a little bit, <laughs> it's unavoidable really but yeah I thought if it would cling to the silicon it would be a lot better but it didn't. So once that was on and I'd smoothed it down and got rid of any pockets of air in there it was time to pour on the aquacast. I poured it onto the top part first rather than down the sides that way I thought that you know it would anchor it right down weigh it down before it came up the sides trying to seep underneath so that was the um, idea in covering that top bit first and then letting it go down into the sides and it worked quite well actually you'll see in a just a moment that it didn't leak under the fabric too badly just a bit in places but I was able to get it off. After an hour it was time to take it out of the mould and I was dying to see how it would look so let's have a look together. And there we go. It looked really good, didn't it? And that colour I chose for the Aquacast worked really well. And by now you've probably already seen some bits around the edge where it's just seeped underneath a little bit. But that actually came off quite easily just with a craft knife, very gently so I didn't damage the fabric. I just gently chipped away at it and then scratched away at the top of the aqua cast so gently and it just came off it flaked away because it was such a thin layer it was fine so the next day it had had chance to fully cure and it was time to seal it i like to use the hydroflow sealer it's the satin sealer or sometimes i use wax for aqua cast but with it being the fabric on this, I thought the Hydroflow sealer would work best. And so I'm just using a little makeup sponge with the Hydroflow just to all over the fabric and the Aquacast to seal it all together. Right, so while that sealer was drying out, it was time to make some accessories. I decided to make a jar and a candlestick. And this time I'm going to be applying the fabric afterwards because you know if you're making something like a jar or a candlestick you can't add the fabric to the mold because it's vertical and it would just crinkle down and it wouldn't work at all and so that was a good reason to try applying it afterwards to see what would happen so here I'm just adding two different colours actually I wasn't it was just the one colour it was the duck egg again and I've separated my aquacast into two pots I just wanted one to be a bit darker than the other I didn't want to go for anything too fancy I wanted the main feature to be the fabric but I thought by just having two slightly different shades of aquacast it would just help it to be you know a little bit more interesting without being overpowering so then it was just a case of adding the aquacast to the molds now the jar mold that i'm using here is a screw topped jar so there's a lot of detail in that um the threading of the screw for the screw top jar right at the neck of the mold so i gave it a really good squeeze around at the bottom to make sure there were no air pockets trapped in there and yeah that's basically the hardest part of it the rest of it was to just alternate the dark and the light colors and fill up all my molds and then i just left them to cure for an hour i hope you um aren't being disturbed by the sound of the rain on my windows we're having a real rainstorm at the moment and it's bashing against the windows it's great i, I do love to listen to it don't you <laughs> Oh, 
OK, so it's an hour later. Let's see how these turned out. So as I said before, I was going for simple and subtle and yet yeah, I got that. They worked really well. I really like those. So, right, we need some um, fabric on these to make them look even better. Now, I do apologise for the... Um, you know the picture quality this was done at night time i seem to be every every time i film at night time just recently i've been having to apologize for the quality but there's not a lot i could do about it because it needed to be done and it was night time <laughs> i'm sure you can live with it you can see what's happening it's not that bad is it and in case any of you want to know, I bought that mould from Devon Dotting, or they might be called Devon Moulds, that's what it says on the mould. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description. The jar mould I think was from Craspire, but I'm not sure if they have them anymore. You can probably get one off Amazon. The next job was to cut two strips of fabric for my jar and for my candlestick. I decided to use PVA glue and I'm just spreading it onto the back of the fabric and then it's just a case of applying it to the jar. It was very easy to apply and it was just, the only thing that is important really is to make sure your end is in the middle of one of the sides rather than at a corner then because obviously then it's less likely to come undone and the fact that you're wrapping it around something means that it's nice and tight and less likely to wrinkle. I did exactly the same thing for the candlestick, so I won't bother showing that. But for the lid, I decided to cover that as well. And that's where I had my only problem, actually, in this process. Uh, yeah, what I did was I drew around it and cut it out in just the same way. But this time I applied the glue to the lid rather than the fabric. So I was putting dry fabric down and it did wrinkle. I'm not sure if it would have wrinkled if I had have put the glue onto the fabric and made it, you know, made it wet before applying to the lid. Um, yeah, or I'm not sure if it's just because it was on a flat surface and there was no tension like there was when I was wrapping the fabric around the sides of the pot. It could be that as well. But yeah, this is where it didn't work so well. And you'll see that soon. Right, it's the next day. We're in natural daylight again. Yes, <laughs> thank goodness. I hate it when I have to film in the... Um, artificial light it never works out well for me so the glue is dried let's see if it's stuck first I needed to trim any messy edges from around the bottom with some sharp scissors it had frayed just a little bit around the bottom but when that gets sealed it will all be you know it will stick it and stop it from fraying and so that will be fine but it's not sealed yet but as I was doing the trimming I could see what you can probably see where the sides of the jar were a little bit um, bowed inwards from the, you know, the silicon mould not being completely flat. The fabric hadn't stuck down to that very well. And so I'm just using a micro brush to squash some fabric underneath, not fabric, <laughs> glue underneath to make sure it's completely stuck everywhere. So, yeah, it was OK, not too bad and it easily fixed. OK, once the glue had dried, you can see what happened. It was all wrinkled and warped. Everything else was fine. It's all been sealed as well. I didn't show you that, but it's all been sealed with the Hydroflow sealer. Uh, yeah, it was only the lid where I had a problem. But I'm going to do something to rectify that in a moment. But first of all, I just wanted to decorate all the edges with a little bit of gold marker. I'm using a chrome marker from Let's Resin and that worked really well. I just went around the edge of the top of the candlestick. And then I used my finer tipped chrome marker to go around the edge on the jar. 
and in an attempt to disguise the wrinkled top I decided to add UV resin on the top and I'm using a high viscosity UV resin from J Diction so that it can be nicely domed on the top and that did help quite a lot. As you can see here after it had finished curing. That's much better. I could still see it but not too bad. So now I have a complete set all finished and I have to say I'm quite happy with the results. The fabric and aquacast definitely worked. I think my favourite method was the first method where I poured the aquacast onto the wet fabric but you can obviously only do that on a flat surface that wouldn't have worked for the jar or the candlestick. So using glue did work definitely. Um, but it's best if you put the glue onto the fabric first to avoid the wrinkling. So we've come to the end of another video. As always, I will put links and discount codes in the video description. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.